Okay. It's a dead. What would happen if we lit a creeper and then pushed it off the ledge? A Minecraft video where today I am so excited to play this particular map because it is made by the amazing Look Mackenstein and it is called the Diamond Minecart Broken Hand Map. Yeah, I kid you not. Now the reason that this... Hey everyone! Dan here and welcome back to another video where today I'm going to show you something a little bit different but it's something very, very awesome that I found this week. And if we rewind a little bit, you might remember that I made a couple of videos on making mini Japanese food. Now if you don't remember, here's a little clip. We're going to have to try and follow these instructions. So I'll show you the instructions so you can read them. Uh, Maybe not, they're, you know, they're all in Japanese. And they were pretty cool. You used to make it with little powders, and then you mix it with water, and then in some occasions you put it over a plastic toilet and drink out of it. Yeah, very weird. Then there was also that time that I tried Japanese food, like actual food, and I'll show you that now. So let's, let's eat one. Oh, yeah, not the tastiest stuff, but today I have found possibly my new favorite YouTube channel because here it is, Miniature Space, where they make mini food, not with powders and stuff, no, not like that. They literally make mini food in a mini kitchen with mini fires, and we're going to watch some of it today. So as you can see, they have made a lot of videos on mini food. They upload literally... Dude? What? Yeah. No. I'm still recording. I know. What are you doing? I'm just putting on some some definition. Okay. This is the making of Oh yes! My favorite expression ever going on! Yes, well I love Rugrats. Rugrats are really good. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're really That would be so cool. Yeah. Oh, I got 
with all the thought of an orangutan's banana preference. And to celebrate what is without a doubt their worst movie yet, let's check out the absolute worst Sony animated movies of all time. Also, I'll keep this list a bit shorter than usual since I've talked about a couple of these before. And I want to focus on the absolute slimiest corporate stain on cinema ever produced by Sony. And of course, if you do like these movies, that's great. It's just my usual silly personal opinion. And I'm glad you can enjoy these movies. Number 5. The Smurfs 2. Smooth, you're up stating the narrator. AKA, the black hole of celebrity voices. I call it this because absolutely no celebrities involved wanted anyone to know they had anything to do with this movie. Take the first Smurfs movie. Then double the simplicity. In fact, let's make it twice as much of a bore as before. After all, all sequels must be inherently worse than their original, unless you're the Toy Story. And once again, these camera angles make me feel cautious. I mean, take this scene. We're clearly having what is meant to be an emotional moment here, but I am feeling queasy just watching it, because the camera is constantly swirling around like a broken merry-go-round. And every celebrity voice actor is even more lackluster than last time. It's safe! <laughs> In fact, poor Katy Perry was so ashamed of playing the star of this movie that she is uncredited as Smurfette, the star of the movie. But I think we all recognize that voice. In fact, all the Smurfs are uncredited. It's like everyone who didn't show their face in this movie wanted their names wiped from history for ever having anything to do with this movie. But given this was nominated for a Golden Razzie Award, you can't really blame them. Every actor's expression looks so 
plastic and soulless. I'd swear they just made evil robotic duplicates of the actors. The only actor who seems to be actually enjoying the role is Gargamel. And I'm sorry, but these blue little runts still look like freak show garden gnomes to me. In case anyone is actually wondering, the story this time is that Smurfette gets kidnapped by Gargamel because Smurfette knows the secret formula for creating Smurfs and blah blah blah. Smurfs 2 is at the start of the list though because, well, young kids might find it colourful and interesting. And while it's certainly not trying, it's got a kinda nice message about family at the end. We didn't believe in her because she changed. She changed because we believed in her. It might actually be meaningful if the actors didn't look so incredibly bored on set. And for number four... Boobah! Open season. Scared silly. Honestly, it was a tough decision. Which was the absolute worst open season sequel? Open season three where Boo goes off to join a freak show circus? Or the director DVD sequel, Scared Silly. All of these sequels have the equivalent reputation for Exiled Warfare, so it wasn't an easy choice. But in the end, the director DVD not only dumped all the original cast, that was a movie, no, it was, but could bore the teeth out of anyone. Even their undefined demographic is going to be reaching for their Minecraft iPads. The funny thing is that everyone who reviews this seems to have the same reaction. We all just felt humdrum grey afterwards, like Open Season had finally managed to steal part of our souls after three consecutive sequels. Who does all the standard juvenile behaviours you'd expect from a movie like this? Poop studying? Drag acts? Poop eating? Oh, oh, Jesus. No. Really? Pardon me, but I really have to address this. An entire scene in this movie is dedicated to Elliot studying fecal matter before eating it. Had to taste it. And also... Pistachios? The movie kind of tries to have a story. Elliot spends the whole film basically just trying to scare Boo for whatever cheap laughs he can manage from the under five. And even if you are an open season fan, the movie doesn't even follow the vague canon of the original series. Not to mention every character has been dumbed down even more than before. When you're in Walter this one is Whoa. voice actor replacements did an okay job with the characters. And the third worst animated Sony movies. Surf Suck 2. Wave Mania. Here's a quiz. What is similar about surfing and wrestling? Come get some! That's right, absolutely nothing. But Sony is willing to try and clumsily jam the two together in the name of a cash grab. But I've talked about this one before in worst cards and crossovers. And all that really needs to be said is, it's another WWE crossover. In fact, it's one giant shameless PG WWE advertisement. Besides, all that really needs to be said is, Goddard like fish. I just wish you could milk a fish. And the second worst animated Sony movie is Eight Crazy Nights. What worst Sony animated movies list would be complete without one of the worst animated movies of all time? Adam Sandler gives us his steadfast, utmost effort to make the most irritating Hanukkah movie to ever foul the cinema screen. Okay, that's it, game over. I've been watching the old man die. I've got to see the because I want to see him die. No, Slater! That's well, so I'll keep this one brief too. Part of what annoys me most about this Sandler Sony flop is that it had this heavy underlying cynicism to it. The movies need to attack and belittle anyone who has any warmth or seasonal cheer to them. Listen, if they have an award for the freakiest looking fraternal twins, who no one even gives a crap about, you two are definitely winning. And the voices. The voices. <laughs> and as people have said, This is actually why this list is a top 5 instead of a top 6. Because honestly, I wanted to make fun of this movie, but honestly, I actually really enjoyed it. There were mostly clever, quick scenes that were sharp and thoughtful. Anyway, let's press on. And I have no doubts. The number one worst animated Sony movie is... <sighs> the Emoji Movie. I didn't feel like I was watching a movie when I saw this. 
I felt like I was watching children be exploited by cynical corporate executives. It felt nauseating, confronting, and just left me feeling angry after. And I am deeply sorry I paid money to see this in cinemas. But my one hope is that some millennial out there might decide not to see this movie because of this review. The homunculus horror distorted crap heap avalanche disaster that is the Emoji Movie. Oh, meat poop. It's... What's amazing about this movie is that merely by its existence, millennials can feel insulted that some slimy corporate weasels out there assume kids are going to see something as meaningless and blank as an emoji on their phone because they marketed to them. Hmm. So anyway guys, that's pretty much the end of the video. If you did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe. But if you did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe. But until next time, guys, we'll see you all next time. Yeah. Peace out. Peace out, man.